Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. Hi, Lydia. Hi. So, so far, it's just us. Just us? The governor released the Massachusetts um, reopening plan today. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I don't know, 11 o'clock it went on or something like that? Yeah. So what it, it basically, I think I got it, it, the gist of it is that short-term rentals aren't going to start to the 8th of June. Right. I think that's that, right. That means that's right. Memorial Day should be pretty light over there. Yeah, that's true. Which is... I hate to say it, probably good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> if the weather's nice. <laughs> yeah. But I did I looked I looked ahead. It looked like it's rain and 50 oh, degree really? weather. And so oh, that's I don't think anybody will miss it. Yeah. It's kind of this is this is the strangest thing ever. It is, it is, I know. It's um Hard not hard to know what to think about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of torn. You want you want businesses to survive, mm -hmm. but you don't want our elderly population to get sick. Exactly. So Justin just tried to log in. It didn't seem to work. Uh, there he is again. Let's see. That's better. I wonder who Sean God is. Hello. Hi. Hey there. How are you? How are you, Carol? Good. Hey, Carol. Hi, Tom. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Okay. How's your granddaughter? She's good. She's two weeks old today, and I haven't held her yet. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> These, these times are cruel, aren't they? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's so sweet that she's, imagine, two weeks old. Oh, my camera. Hang on. Um, so I see Justin, and I see Justin twice. I don't know if, oh, I love your earrings. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Anne. They're adorable. Hi. Hi. Hi, Anne. Hi. And there's Justin. Justin, do you want to be on, uh, do you want to unmute yourself, or? Yeah. I'll unmute you just to say hello. And oh, it's muted. She's sitting in your truck. <laughs> Are you en route? Hoping uh, you'll get home one of these days. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can hear you. Um, no, it's so the kids and the dogs don't attack me while I'm okay. muted. I think I saw a shellfish advisory board meeting where there a person was um, the chair I think was zooming from his boat. Oh yeah, <laughs> cool. Yeah, Dave was. So we have a couple more. Um, here's Bruce Behrens as well, and um, we're at eleven participants right now. So let's see. I'm gonna have to. Yeah, if you want to unmute yourself, it's however you like. So as you, we have enough um, historical commission members here. We have a quorum now with four of us. It's, although here, I'm going to just rename myself so there's nothing to in here. Well, well, this is All right. And where did Carol, and there's Janet. Okay. So here we all are. Does everyone can hear me okay? Welcome to the meeting. Uh, excuse me, can I ask who Diane is? Diane, let's see. Diane is um, at, from uh, My Generation Solar. Oh yeah, okay. Okay. So here we are. Um, welcome everybody. Thanks for participating today. And um, this is the only thing on the agenda is to go over the letters from the preservation hall contractors that Janet provided. And we did hear from KP Law. So I have that 
reply, which I'm going to share on the screen. Um, should we first look at the letters from the contractors? Fine, whatever. Okay. So just bear with me here. I have it all in one folder. And I'll go to the desktop. Wait a minute here. That's interesting. <laughs> this is my desktop. Yes, <laughs> Uh, where, okay, Janet and contractor letters. Here's. All right, let's start with a letter from Preservation Hall. So, I don't have to read it out loud. You can all see it, correct? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple more participants. Okay. I see Meryl is joining us as well. So we're just reading the letter um, that Preservation Hall sent to the Historical Commission. So has everyone had a chance to read that? Mm -hmm. And it's, as you can see, it's uh, from the, the board. Um, it's, uh, it's the second page. Uh, can I ask a question? Um, it's Meryl. Sure, Meryl. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the second page of the letter says, please see the attached letter from My Generation Solar. I didn't find that. Do you have that? Uh, let me see. There's two, there are two additional PDFs along with this one. So I can, I can go to yeah, those. I printed those out. One is a letter from Paul at Casalt Roofing. And the other is a letter from Andrew Wade. But I don't see anything from My Generation Solar unless it was a previous something that we received. Yeah, if I may, Andrew Wade um, is the owner of My Generation Solar. Ah, hi, Janet, I didn't see you. Hi. <laughs> I guess I need to change All that. right, so let me go to Andrew Wade's PDF here. So this is from May 7th. Yes. I thought we'd already agreed that 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 we would have would allow the asphalt to be under the panels. Under the uh, yeah, on under the panel the, side on the side toward the park. Right. Didn't we? Well, they want to. Well, okay. So there's this one. Okay. 
the problem is though that he's saying it would be problematic not to 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 have two different materials on the two different sides of the roof i know right so okay okay then we have this note from paul Derry, and this is the roofer So that's, uh, these are the letters that came in from the contractors. And our last memo to Justin Post, the building inspector, was from April 1st. And at that meeting, we, let me get to it here. Let's just see. Up top, no? No, the one that's the blue selenium sun. Okay, just a second. I thought I had it. The KP law, is that it? No, the KP law is what we got just today. That's a response. I kind of did want to just um, show you what we had sent. Okay, so we had asked town council to review the preservation restriction from 2008 and uh, to be sure the historical commission has the authority to allow the project to go forward and is in compliance with the agreement. And um, so we had approved it with the conditions that, you know, that it go to town council first. And what we had approved was on the park side of the main hall, synthetic slate and solar installation was approved to retain and store original slate for possible future use. And then on the bank side of the main hall, retain and repair the original slate. Okay, so then we go to Back to this, which is the KP law reply. And this is quite long, so I just think, uh, does someone want to read this out loud? <clears throat> someone from the commission? I can read it if you want. Yeah. Let me okay. hmm? Yes, please do. Okay, Dan. Justin Post requested an opinion on behalf of the Wellfleet Historic Commission as to whether a solar array on the roof of Preservation Hall would be consistent with a preservation restriction on the building. A preservation restriction was to be placed on the property pursuant to a town vote under Article 11 of the December 3rd, 2007 special town meeting to appropriate $500,000 in Community Preservation Act funds for the purpose of reconstructing the building that is now Preservation Hall. As required under General Law 44B, Section 12, Preservation Hall agreed in a CPA grant agreement to convey to the town a historic preservation restriction meeting the requirements of General Law 184, 8831 to 33, guaranteeing the preservation and care of the building in perpetuity. Attached to Justin Post's email was a letter dated June 2nd, 2008 from Rex Peterson to Kathleen O'Donnell, an attorney formerly with our firm, along with a preservation restriction from Wellfleet Preservation Hall, Inc. to the town of Wellfleet, acting by and through its historical commission, the town, dated May 7th, 2008. The preservation restriction had been executed by both Preservation Hall and the town. Mr. Peterson requested that Attorney O'Donnell obtain the signature of the Executive Director of the Massachusetts Historical Commission being the last step before recording. Michael Steinitz of the Massachusetts Historical Commission apparently declined to have the preservation restriction signed by uh, Massachusetts Historical Commission. The reason for this was that 
while Preservation Hall owns the building on the property pursuant to a deed from the town, the town still owns the underlying land and leases it to Preservation Hall under a 99 year lease. The town thus has an ownership interest in the property. I the, the land. Yeah. The land. The, ga the grantee of the preservation restriction is also the town acting through its historical commission. Mr. Steinitz's position is that the town cannot be both the grantor as owner of the land and the grantee under the preservation restriction. As a result, the preservation restriction was not signed by the MHC and was never recorded with the Registry of Deeds. There is accordingly currently no preservation restriction on the Preservation Hall building. I became involved in this matter several years later. I note that in 2012, Bruce Behrens, the attorney then representing Preservation Hall, advised Paul Seeloff what had occurred, stating he had spoken with Michael Steinitz, who explained why the preservation restriction had never been signed by MHC. In 2015, we advised the town that another grantee would need to hold the preservation restriction, that is, a qualified charitable corporation or trust. To my knowledge, in the interim, this issue has not been addressed. In my opinion, Pursuant to General Law 44B-512, a preservation restriction must be imposed on the preservation hall property. The appropriate course of action, in my further opinion, is to find a third party, nonprofit organization to hold the restriction. I do not recommend at this time that the solar equipment be placed on the building. The roof of the structure is slate and appears to be pitched Accordingly, a solar array would be visible and would not be consistent with the historic elements of the building that are to be preserved. I would be happy to work with the town to draft a preservation restriction to a third party nonprofit entity that would be acceptable to MHC. The town could explore during this process whether solar facilities could be placed somewhere on the structure. Okay, thank you, Anne, for mm -hmm. reading, reading that. Um, shall I go back to the screen now? I mean, to all our pictures. Yeah. All right. So, Bruce and Vanessa, I see Vanessa's there too. Bruce, would you like to address what the KP law attorney said? Yeah, um, in a word. Uh, to say I'm annoyed is putting it mildly. Um, no one from the town ever informed us about the last recommendation uh, from KP Law. Never. I don't recall having a conversation with Steinitz in the first place, but that's really irrelevant at this point. But after that 2012 recommendation, the KP Law apparently made to the town and by the way, I was never contacted by Kathleen O'Donnell either, who I wrote the preservation yeah. agreement with. Um, we were never informed about this last step that KP Law recommended. So as I say, to say I'm a little bit annoyed is probably being kind about the situation. Mm -hmm. Just to um, make it clear, I want to say that uh, this came from Catherine Lord Klein, the attorney. Can you go back up to the paragraph where they indicate um, what it was that they told the town needed to be done? Yes. I think it's here, this part in bold. Can you see it? Uh, what, um, I became involved in this matter several years later. I note that in 2012, Bruce Spearins, the attorney then representing Preservation Hall, advised Paul Seeloff what had occurred stating he had spoken with Michael Steinitz who explained why the preservation restriction had never been signed by MHC. In 2015, we advised the town that another grantee would need to hold the preservation restriction, i.e. a qualified charitable corporation or trust. To my knowledge, in the interim, this issue has not been addressed. Bruce, is that the section you wanted read? Yeah, okay. where they say we advise that another grantee, we would never inform that and I know there's no communication to that effect because obviously okay. I would have seen it. The other th concern I have is that there's no citation made to the fact that 
the, the fact that the town owns the land prevents MHC from signing it in the first place because the town owns the land, but it doesn't own the building. So I'm not even sure that KP Law's opinion is correct in the first place. <laughs> so I guess I'm a little bit even more annoyed about the whole situation because I don't understand why the ownership of the, of the land has anything to do with the ownership of the building. <clears throat> because the preservation restriction doesn't apply to the land, it applies to the building. That right. says the town has an ownership interest in the property, i.e. the land. The no. land, not the building. The, we, yeah. we own the building. Yeah, but I guess, I guess the point that, they're, that they've brought up here is that there's an ownership interest and that the town cannot be both the grantor and the grantee. If that's something you want to appeal or... Well, you may. I, we're, obviously we're gonna have to because it's, it's now seven years after, eight years after the recommendation that they made to the town that mm -hmm. no one ever told us about. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, another thought here is in the interest of time and, and the project that you would like to, part of, you know, what you'd like to do is to explore this third party um, recommendation. A third party nonprofit organization. Um, well, that's there... certainly easier. Than, <laughs> that's certainly easier than telling them or suggesting that they're wrong. Uh, um, yeah, I don't. You know, um, is there? And I'm just asking a question here. Is there a nonprofit organization like Friends of Preservation Hall or something that's not? It's a separate entity or an entity that you could, you would consider reaching out to? Well, not that, not that we have, no, there isn't. I mean, we just have our own, you know, we have our own nonprofit, which holds title to the building. Yeah. So, so when they say, um, could you go up a little to, to, to see what kind of a third party nonprofit they're talking about? Because I don't know who else would have the ability to execute a preservation restriction other than the entity that owns the building. The whole thing, honestly, the whole thing doesn't make sense to me, to be perfectly honest with you, but. Um, okay, so. In other words, just consider who, why would anyone else that doesn't own the building sign a preservation restriction agreement with a town that doesn't own the building either? I mean, I, I, just, I just question their entire opinion here, honestly. Okay. Um, I, th I think sometimes there's, there's outside groups like Historic New England or Preservation Massachusetts that, um, that do hold preservation restrictions. I mean, obviously we have to look into it. I don't see we have a yeah. choice at this point. I just, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, Could Sarah be of help here, Lydia? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. It's possible. It could be that maybe oh, the county could help in some way. I mean, the Kid Cod Commission, sorry. Um, we can May certainly I just ask a question, uh, yeah. Bruce, I guess maybe to you. What do we need the, the preservation restriction for? There's an obligation to have it in place as part of the $500,000 that was granted at town meeting. 500,000 Community Preservation Act funds. And Lydia, could you scroll down to the second design. half of this first page, please? Yes. Second, second half of the first page? Yes, thank you. Okay, let me see if I can just make this a bit smaller. You could go to the top and change it from 150% to 125%. That might be helpful. Okay. And then scroll so we can see from the bottom of the page up, please. Bottom of the page up, okay. Thank you. Sure.
I have to get, um, pardon, um, Helen Wilson would like to be included here. I have to get to that screen, so. Let's see, how do I do this? Oh. I did. Here we go. I just let her know that I'm trying. Uh, All she has to do is go to the calendar, no? I think she, it's it's an admitted thing. She's not being admitted to the meeting, but I have to, I have to get her admitted <clears throat> here. If she goes to the calendar, then she just clicks on the link. Um, I think that there's a waiting room thing. If you can click on your participants at the bottom of Zoom, you okay. should bring up the waiting room and allow you to let her in. Okay, thank you. Well, I see it off to here. Okay, there we go. Okay. There, Helen? I think she should be on. I'm that. here, thank you. Okay, sure. I'll go back to the page now, to the written page. Yes, thank you. All right. Um, let me know when you want me to go to the, uh, when you're done with the section. Thank you. Just one, one moment, please. Mm -hmm. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Bruce, but it sounds to me that if, if you look at the paragraph that starts with Michael Steinitz, the Massachusetts Historical Commission, it says that the town cannot be both the grantor and the grantee. So the nonprofit organization that they're looking to act as a third party would be replacing the town's role or would it be replacing our role? Well, it doesn't say. Right. What says Mr. Steinitz's position is that the town cannot be both the grantor and the grantee under the preservation restriction. As a result, the preservation restriction was not signed. Well, first of all, the town doesn't, what, as I say, the town doesn't have an interest in the building anyway. So I question the integrity of the opinion to begin with. Um, he's not, in addition, they're not exactly clear as to the issue of who they want substituted, although it probably would be the town. But then again, they're asking the town to be substituted by an entity that doesn't own, have an interest in the building, but the town doesn't have an interest in the building. So as I say, I, the opinion, frankly, in my opinion, is not, not well written or well reasoned. Other than that, I have no opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, um, I think probably consulting Michael Steinitz at the Mass Historical Commission might be a good step for Preservation Hall to take. Maybe there's some help there. And um, because, you know, we, di we did approve the project contingent upon uh, legal opinion yeah, yeah. And by the way Lydia the other thing that the opinion doesn't do is it doesn't answer your question in the first place which was whether or not you folks no, had the authority right. he doesn't even answer the question you asked him in the first place she she doesn't she, I'm sorry um, no well as I'm thinking about this if the if we we are representing the town in this I believe yes mm -hmm. oh. and it sounds as though we don't have the authority to do that because the town can't be a part of this decision decision we need a third party oh. that's the way i'm reading it but yeah that's 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 <laughs> yeah, what they're saying well put it this way carol what they're saying is that 
you don't have the authority now because the town never signed a preservation restriction agreement, but they don't say whether or not you have this authority or who has the authority once someone is substituted for the town. Because that, say they want someone substituted for the town, then that person would be the authority, would be the, the representative of the town to the preservation restriction agreement, but it doesn't answer the question of whether or not you then have the authority, which was the question Lydia asked in the first place. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> Don't go away, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Get back here, Tom. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm still here. Yeah. I thought I we were going to agree with yes or no answer on this. Yeah. You know, first of all, the questions oh. weren't, the questions we had weren't answered. Um, second of all, it, it, this is very confusing. I mean, say, say the non, the way I understand, say the nonprofit, we pick a nonprofit. And then is, is she saying a nonprofit then has, is the decision maker? Say a nonprofit has no relation with, with the town? No, that's or not. Or the historical commission. Then he or she or the group can, they, they can agree or not agree. We have no, and we have no control over that. The opinion doesn't answer that question, Tom. You're absolutely right. It, it yeah. creates even more, it creates even more of a controversy when you really come down to it. Um, but the, but again, in my opinion, what, what the, what their opinion ignores is the fact that the town does not have an interest in the building. Well, they, according to them, they, they do because the, it's on town land and therefore there is a, an interest. Um, and they, and they don't give any citation for their opinion in the first place. But um, so I think probably, well, probably the easiest thing to do at this point is have me follow up with Catherine and have her explain a little bit more about how she arrived at this opinion and then see whether or not they would be satisfied. In other words, you don't want to go through all kinds of steps and then have them give another opinion that doesn't allow us to do what we need to do in the first place. So probably the best thing to do is contact her and have her explain her opinion a little bit more and then see whether or not um, a third party nonprofit is the answer. And if that is the answer, mm -hmm whether or not you then have authority to approve the project, which is the question you asked in the first place. Okay. okay. Um, so th that sounds like a, the best step right now to, for you to consult with them. And also, again, I think Michael Steinitz, Sarah Korjeff, you know, these are people that are, have a lot of experience uh, with preservation restrictions. So it would be a, recommendation and um, we you know we put together this meeting this is an extra meeting we usually meet the first Wednesday of every month and we can um, if the commissioners are willing we can meet again you know as soon as you have a little bit more clarification can you um, Lydia can you email this opinion to me yeah I can I have the whole folder I can so, oh, okay. Yeah, just send it to all of whatever, yeah. however you've been communicating. Yeah. The, um, the letter oh. from KP Law came in two JPEGs, and I put it into um, Google Drive and then turned it into text. And that's why there are some typos. It wasn't from the lawyer. All right. Um, while, we're, while we're here, do any of my um, Preservation Hall folks have any questions, or do they understand what the... <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Well, I, I do. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm just wondering how, within all of this context from the attorney, it sounds to me when I read this letter that they've rendered an opinion on the solar installation. 
Exactly. Uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, getting like that, that wasn't actually anything that they were asked to do. That's all right. Yeah, That's they are question. giving an opinion. Um, they are giving an unsolicited opinion on that issue as well. Yes. Uh, and they, but there is in that, um, in that letter at the end, you know, they'd be happy to work with the town to draft a preservation restriction to a third party nonprofit entity that would be acceptable to MHC. The town could, ex could explore during this process whether solar facilities could be placed somewhere on the structure. So mm -hmm. it, uh, her person, I guess her personal recommendation. Yeah. And I think a lot of towns, oh gosh, sorry about that, oops. A lot of towns um, didn't allow solar on historic buildings, but uh, Wellfleet has many, many, you know, all but maybe one in all the years that we've been reviewing solar on solar installations. I think for a while Provincetown um, didn't allow it, but now they do. But now I see Helen's hand up and I want, Helen, can you, um, can you hear? Can, are you unmuted? Yeah, can go ahead. Me? Yes, go ahead. Thank you for recognizing me. I have also read the letter, it was sent to me. Um, and I also reread your lease. I'm addressing the people from Pres Hall. And speaking as only one person, an individual who's interested in this kind of thing, I'm not representing the select board, obviously, but I need to say that. Um, here's the way I feel about it. The town, in a completely different arena, has committed to making things greener. I'm trying to remember, it's a, it's a uh, green compact, I forget the formal name for it, we've entered into a commitment. Robert Shapiro on the Energy Committee organized it, and it's uh, we we cast our lot with that. That's my first thought about it. My second thought about it is this: there is no historic uh, preservation restriction on this building for whatever reason. Okay, a good section of the building, as we all know, was completely ripped apart, demolished. The historical integrity of the building, um, you know, it's not there anymore. That happened. It was allowed. In my opinion, it was a good thing. And to add on to what was said by Lydia just now, this is a conventional thing to do in this day and age, is to add solar panels. It's not like you're changing the front or the back in a way that completely destroys the integrity of the building, in my opinion. It's not going to be in all the roofs. It's going to cover part of the slate roof. Good luck getting that on there, but never mind. And I think that you should also um, consider the fact that we're in this day and age and that we need to do it again. So thank you for letting me um, speak. Thank you, Helen. Yeah, the, another reason, and this was explained in Sarah Karjev's advisory opinion, is that solar panels are reversible too. So that was another reason that we had to to approve panels. Um, of course, there's the issue of what goes underneath the panels too, but the panels we've always been on board with. Um, I think there's not that much else we can do right now until Bruce consults with KP Law and um, Mass Historical um, and Cape Cod Commission. I believe that's the best course to take right now. Yes, Bert? Just one follow up on the comment that you just made about the solar panels being reversible is that if we did replace the roof with slate again, because of how they would have to cut the slate to install the solar panels. If we did remove them, then that would require significant overhaul of the slate in order to um, take, take advantage of those solar panels being removed. So um, I would say the solar panels are removable if the, if the roof is asphalt, but not slate. Okay, Anne, did you have something to say? Oh, no, I just, no, it's okay. okay. Um, Justin, do you have anything you want to add, Justin, building inspector? 
Not really. I, I'm kind of for it also. Okay. All right. Um, let's see, it's about 537, I think. If you can work on that and then we can schedule another, we can schedule an extra meeting. I don't think there's much more we can do there. According to the lawyer, uh, the attorney, um, they're obligated to, to do that by statute, to have a preservation restriction in place. And so my understanding is once we do have that preservation restriction in place, we will come back here to discuss what we were hoping to discuss tonight, which is what kind of roofing you guys will permit us to use because you're in favor of the solar? Yes. Is that, is that I'm, correct? If I, I'm speaking for everyone from that last memo, yes. My, my question would be, are we the people who, who decided at this point? As I'm reading this, right. the town is taken out of the equation. Right. And you get this third party. So I'm not sure it's us anymore. It's very vague. Right. That's something that Bruce will, will clarify where we can too. <laughs> So we really want to just find someone that agrees with us, right? <laughs> it's not even that. E it's not even that easy, Marla. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, just point of clarification: um, Who is going to be talking with um, Sarah Korchev and uh, um, Michael Steinet? No, Michael Steinitz is from the Mass Historical Commission. So is that something that, that we do or? No, I'm going to follow up with um, Attorney Klein. Okay. Okay, so that's, uh, Bruce is going to follow up with the attorney from KP Law, the town council. <coughs> and um, my recommendation was that you also get uh, the preservation specialists involved. So should, should we be doing that as the historical commission? I think it's more direct if, um, if Bruce or Preservation Hall would talk with them directly. Yeah. Well, the issue, the legal issue has to be resolved before we do anything else. We're just going to spin our wheels. Okay. Um, until, until I get this letter clarified and find out exactly why they rendered the opinion they did and what they actually want us to do. But um, I'm definitely going to want them to also render an opinion that if we execute um, a new agreement with this third party that you then have the authority to make the decision, which isn't clear either. Okay. Sounds like a good plan. I'm sorry, and why did you suggest getting Sarah involved? Wasn't she involved originally? She was, and I think because of their expertise with preservation restrictions in particular. In other words, if you need to find a third party if we need a third party, you might be someone who could recommend. Sure, someone. but if we don't need a third party, then fine. Then we're cool. Yeah, that's why Bruce is saying let's do let's do the attorney first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, folks. Any anything Thanks, else? I feel like we covered. Thank enough. you, Olivia, very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you very much. guys, for trying to work with us. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, oh, we have to adjourn. The Historical Commission has to actually adjourn, so. <laughs> I move to adjourn. Okay, is there a second? 541. I second the motion. Okay, all in favor of adjourning. Yay. Bye. Bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks all. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you for so participating. Leave meeting. Yeah, where is that button anyway? <laughs> oh, there it is. It's on the bottom. <laughs> bottom right. Having a hell of a time here. Uh, okay. End meeting. Bye. <laughs>